a broken PA system, unmonitored CCTV, breast milk not being stored properly, medical staff administering medication against the advice of experts, and staff not monitoring patients under sedation. These are just some of the details in the Joint Commission report that was the subject of denying accreditation to GMH pending appeal. The Joint Commission accreditation report that GMH refused to release to the public not surprisingly contains some alarming details. This is the same report that is a subject of a preliminary denial of accreditation to GMH pending appeal. The Joint Commission cited seven areas that have a high likelihood to harm patients, visitors, or staff. They are environment of care, life safety, leadership, medical staff, provision of care, national patient safety goals, and performance improvement. Of the seven areas of concern, five were found to be widespread, meaning the problems existed throughout the hospital. Here's a breakdown of some of the findings. In one instance, a medical staff practitioner continued to prescribe antibiotics against the advice of experts like the infectious disease consultant and the antimicrobial stewardship team. In two other cases, patients were not properly evaluated while on sedation, which is required at least once every hour. One patient was not monitored for 12 hours, while another for 24 hours while that patient was on propofol. The Joint Commission found that pre-cleaning of medical instruments was not standardized as different departments had different methods. For example, the emergency department would wipe them down with sanitary wipes first before sending them off to be sanitized, but the pediatric unit would only rinse them while the operating room did not pre-clean medical instruments at all before sending them to be sanitized. The PA system at GMH has been down since December 22nd, and the Joint Commission found that the administration had not effectively communicated an interim communication system to all their staff in the event of an emergency. For example, one employee had no idea that the PA system was even down. The CCTV system in some areas was not working, but even in the areas where it was working, like in the pediatric unit, where staff rely on it to ensure safety of patients during the night shift, it was not being monitored 24-7. In the emergency department and in the ICU, staff were unable to identify where a certain life-saving medication was located in the event of a clinical emergency involving succinylcholine and dantrolene. There was one instance in which the unavailability of rooms left a patient stranded in the ER for two days, but while in the ER, the patient had not been given an initial nursing admission assessment. The Joint Commission cited the GMH Board of Trustees for not meeting since July of last year. This is a concern since board members are responsible for holding GMH accountable and for approving changes in policies and hiring of staff. Joint Commission noted in its letter to GMH that the hospital administration must provide evidence if they want to clarify the findings in the report as part of the appeals process. However, as the Joint Commission keenly points out, the evidence, quote, needs to have existed prior to your survey, end quote. The appeals process has several other steps. The Joint Commission will review any clarifying evidence submitted and make a determination from there. If they find that GMH continues to meet the criteria for preliminary denial of accreditation, they will then present the findings to the executive leadership team for a final decision. The final decision will then be documented in GMH's quality report, which will be posted online. A redacted version of the Joint Commission quality inspection report, meanwhile, has been posted on the legislature's website.